they don't know what a, what? Children don't know what an ice cream social is. Oh. We used to always have that. And then you would have, do they eat? Tell me they have a homeroom mother or father. They don't even have a homeroom mother or father anymore. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. No. Okay. All right, have a seat. I'm going to call the docket. When I call the docket, let me know you are here. In custody, we have Kendrick Williams, Pete Castillo, Alejandro De Leon. Thank you. Nicholas Gonzalez, custody. David Aguirre. Thank you. Sebastian Yanez, Dakari Jackson. All right, thank you. And custody is Tyrone Eds, Adias Hernandez Rivas, Marco Marino, Edgar Aguilar, Rogelio Lara, Rogelio Lara. That's a PTD setting, Judge, but uh, maybe he's supposed to be here. So. Yeah, he's supposed to be here. Sergio Chavez, custody, David Barefield. David Barefield. Macy Malone, custody. Jose Escalante. Jose Escalante. Juan Garcia. Ricardo Quiros, custody. Alfredo Lugo. Thank you. Frank Patterson. Jose Escalante. Custody, Maria Cisneros. Richard Campos. Thank you. Eric Trevino. Eric Trevino. Jason Montes. All right, where is he? He's in custody? Okay, thank you. Robert Solis. Pete Castillo, custody. Priscilla Batias, custody. Brian Garza, custody. Matthew Rodriguez. Matthew Rodriguez. Johnny Joe Webb. Jesse Gonzalez, custody, Sebastian Delgado. All right, so uh, Deputy Mejia, when those people come in, they need to be placed in the box. All right, everyone, please confer. Oh, oh, yes, I did. Thank you. All right. What names? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, anyone whose name was not called? You, sir? Daniel what? Uh, do you know your case number or SID number? Okay. Yes. Uh, do you know who your attorney is? Yes, Joe uh, Osher. All right. Anyone else? No, Jonathan Chavez was standing in for him. That's oh no, no, no. They, oh. I have you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Joshua Montez. Jason. Yeah. All right. Why are you late? I was, I was here. No, you were not. I called your name. You didn't answer. No, he says he's Jason. 
Oh. Okay. All right, so you're not on the docket. All right, what's your case of SID number? Who's your attorney? All right, just remain seated. Anyone else? All right, everyone confer. Adriana, can you look up these two people? I have the first one at 116789 All right, uh Mr. Garcia, if you could unmute. Yes, your honor. Good morning. Good morning. What's your client's name? Ernest Mora. All right, can I see the file on Ernest Mora? I could be wrong, but I don't see it on the docket. It was supposed to. No, it was supposed to be placed on the docket today. I don't know why it isn't. Let me give you the. All right. Uh, I can give you the cause number. It's... Yes, it's 2023 CR 9524. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Garcia, we're pulling your file. Okay, Judge. Judge, if I may, while you're looking for the file or getting to you, uh, there's another case uh, that's still not indicted. Um, it's a night mag case on a DWI third. It's not been indicted as of uh, this morning. I checked before I got online. All right, State, if you all can look into this uh, case number. Uh, his SID number is 729776. And if you can give me an update on the DWI. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so State, do you have any update on the DWI third? Yeah, so I, I mean, we, I can speak to Mr. Garcia if he wants to call me or um, he's, not, he's not here today. Um, no, he's by Zoom. Okay. Uh, all right, so this case is coming back on April 15th. Um, I, can, I can speak to uh, Mr. Garcia if he wants to. Um, always, but I just, uh, you know, it's easier when people are here. Okay. All right, Mr. Garcia? Yes, Judge. All right, we're going to come back on April 15th. You'll need to confer with the state off docket. 
And Ms. DeMora, for April 15th, you need to be in the courtroom. Do you understand? All right. Okay, Judge, I'll drop by later this morning. I've got a, a setting in the 175th, so I'll, I'll try to make time to go talk to Hal. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. And on one person who said that they haven't hired an attorney yet, we, we're going to take care of that today. Yes, I do have one person and then wake up the number of 116935. Yes. Fine. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, thank you. Hello. Mm -hmm. All right, so has this case been indicted? All right, Joshua Montez, come forward. All right, it's the court's understanding that your case hasn't been indicted yet. It has not been indicted. So here's the thing. When your case is indicted, if it is indicted and you come to court, you need to come with an attorney because I've been told in the system that you've refused to be interviewed for an attorney. So on the day that your case is indicted, you need to have an attorney with you. Do you understand? All right. You're excused. Okay. There, get, uh, I want to have to come back or anything. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. 
Good day, Your Honor. You too. Hey, have you had a file pulled? You just keep staring at me. I have no idea why. <laughs> Sorry, Judge. <laughs> you have that effect on the one. <laughs> I have two individuals that showed up, just showed up, Judge, on the docket. Mark Costa and Jose Escalante oh, are sitting in the box. Mark has a recall from yesterday. All the paperwork is turned in. We should be ready to rock and roll on. Okay, Mr. Escalante is. Okay. Yes. Sure, no, no, no worries, no worries. <clears throat> Mark Coastal and Jose and Jose Escalator. And uh, Coastal's crew should be ready to go. Sure. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, he just arrived a little late. He's in the box. So I just want to let the court know that he's here and I'm going to keep confirming the states. Do I have another two ready when you can go and in? Yes, I believe so. I believe they did that yesterday. And there's a plea on this on one case. On Mr. Costa's is should be ready to go, Judge. He arrived a, a little tardy. He's in the box along with Mr. Escalante, who's in the back right. He also arrived just a little late, conferring with the state on Mr. Escalante. All right, court is calling 2023 CR 10653, State of Texas versus Mark Anthony Acosta. I'm sorry, Mark Anthony Costa. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state. Defense. Jason Wolf for defense. And are you Mr. Costa? Are you Mr. Costa? Yes, ma'am. Why were you late today? I had to park a lot further than usual because I didn't have the $25 to park close this time. And there's always a long line here. Yeah. <laughs> so Parking downtown has become outrageous. Yeah, I don't, this is the only time I ever come here. I'm so okay. All right, counsel, you received all the discovery. Did you review it with your client? I have, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Costa, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, it, it appears that you only proceeded on count one. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Any objections to the waiver of counts 
two through four. No, Your Honor. Nope. And we're also waiving the uh, enhancement paragraph, Judge. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled uh, court admonishments and the defendant's waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand in count one, you're charged with possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance, penalty group one, four to 200 grams. That's a first degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from five to 99 years or life in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I do, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? I do, Your Honor. Mr. Costa, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, punishment is to be, well, the agreement is proceed on count one. Punishment to be assessed at seven years in the prison. The state is silent on your application. There's to be restitution to SAPD for testing and a $2,500 fine. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense is at the plea. Yes, Your Honor. State is at the plea. Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? Yes, then to the offense is charged in count one. How do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Yes. State any evidence. Your Honor, I offer State's Exhibit 1 in the attachments. I've reviewed those with my client, Your Honor. We have no objections. State, you may continue to confer. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. The court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments, and the court will review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. We'll set this for sentencing. Uh, probation, Bashan, how many weeks do you need for a PSI? Okay. All right, your sentencing is going to take place on May 6th. Thank you.
Uh, do you need a, a TAP evaluation? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Make sure you make all of the appointments. So I'll schedule you for PSI and TAP evaluation. Uh, you'll come back here on May 6th at 9 a.m. I'll base my decision on whether or not to grant your application based upon the PSI and TAP evaluation and any other evidence that's presented to me. Do you have any other questions? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, uh, just remain in the courtroom. Probation will give you instructions and you'll get a reset form. Thank you. Uh, Adriana, do you have a reset form? Jason Wolf. Jose Escalante. Hello, Mr. Escalante. Good morning, Your Honor. All right. Why were you late? Parking. Parking, Your Honor. Oh, that's going to be everybody's reason today? I don't got no excuse. I ain't going to use an excuse, Your Honor. Okay. So today is your plea deadline date. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. So are you accepting the plea or not? Still conferring with the state judge. I have additional evidence I want to give the state for them to consider you know, the last offer judge. All right. Yes, if I okay. can have some time to do that. Yes. Thank you, Judge. Judge, can I approach? Uh, on what case? It's on Quiroz Ramirez. We have an agreement, but the MAC office hasn't contacted him to discuss the immigration matter. I don't know if they could bring somebody in today or how. Yeah. Normally have MAC bring somebody down. Is that the easiest way, I would think? Mm hmm <laughs> no, <laughs> Immigration
Yeah, it's like this. Oh, yes.
yesterday. You, oh. So we did get that coordinated. So we have, oh, well, what, what date is it? April 24th. All right. Uh, you need to have them pull the file. Yes. I'll do that. Okay. And then we can just set it shortly after that. So. Okay. You need to have the file pull. I thought it, I thought it was cut up next. Hmm? I thought it was cut up. Who's your pull? Sergio Chavez. All right, Sergio Chavez. He doesn't speak that English, Your Honor. That's uh, all right. So he doesn't speak English, so we need an interpreter. We need an interpreter. Uh, if you can have him take a seat. And if you'll call an interpreter down. Yes, ma'am, that's from the way. Alfonso? Yes, Judge. You're a Spanish speaker, are you not? I am. All right. So what's going to end up, I'm going to bring an interpreter down, but this attorney doesn't speak Spanish. And the client is going to be Sergio Chavez. Okay. Yes, right. hmm. Okay. Oh, sure. No, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. This is the extra expense and we're trying to reset on the info. So I told him we have a date. He's not here, that's fortunate. Oh no, I understand because it was recalled for, it was going to be recalled for Thursday. Yes, ma'am. And when is the deposition going to be completed? The 24th, which is a Wednesday. So we can come back to the 25th or 26th. Or so. All right. It'll come back on April 25th. And you'll let your client know? Yes, ma'am, of course. All right. Thank you.
All right, that's coming back on the uh, 25th of April. Well, if you want to use some write-offs, really, because it's... I just, I just try to say I'm not going to go Sure. <laughs> style on the Kari Jackson case. And on this one, can you pull the file? Dakari Jackson. Okay, I remember this case. Yes, Judge, I've got enough to speed on this case. All right. So there was a withdrawal of the plea. Yes, Judge, we're asking if we can get set for trial on May 7th to give any time to come up with a game plan on how to resolve this case, Your Honor. Okay. All right, May 7th? Yes, Your Honor, that works. All right, so we'll recall it on May 7th. All right. So once you sign the reset form, you'll be excused and do not be late for court again. You understand? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. All right. Why were you late? <laughs> trying to get a ride here and the traffic was moving. So. All right. I don't know what people have against ride, riding via. I did it. I mean, I caught an Uber. Oh, an Uber. That's what young people are doing now. Ubers. <laughs> you know, I, I remember back in the day, you would have to call the taxi and you're waiting. Sometimes it's busy. I used to ride the bus. Oh, hey, that's how I learned the city of San Antonio by riding the bus. If you ever get lost, 
If you find Fredericksburg or Calabria, uh, okay. you'll, get, you'll get back. <laughs> All right. So uh, they're going to give you a reset form. Make sure you're on time, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, George. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Hello, and we have an interpreter here. Okay. And uh, Mr. Cabanas, yes, sir. this is the case that you'll be on. And we're just going to go on the record. All right. We're going to go on the record. Court is calling 2023 CR 7420, State of Texas versus Sergio Chavez. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state. Defense. Christopher Simpkins. And are you Sergio Chavez? Yes. All right. And we have an interpreter here. If you could raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm you will faithfully translate from English into Spanish and from Spanish into English? So help you, God? I do, yeah. All right. And if you'll state your name for the record. All right. All right. So, uh, Mr. Simpkins, is the court's understanding that you wish to withdraw from this case? Yes, Your Honor. And what is the reason? There is a language barrier. I cannot provide effective assistance to counsel. You need to slow down and speak up. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, there is a language barrier, Your Honor. I am not fluent in Spanish. Not fluent in English. All right. Uh, Mr. Chavez, do you have any objection to Mr. Simpkins withdrawing? Uh, no. No. All right. All right. Thank you. Your excuse. All right. Your attorney is going to be uh, Mr. Alfonso Cabanas. And Mr. Cabanas, do you have any objections to being placed on this case? No, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Chavez, are you a U.S. citizen? No. no. All right. So, um, Mr. Cabanas, will you need an immigration attorney appointed as well? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Ms. Ferguson, we're going to need an immigration attorney. Oh, Matt, you be down here just for minutes. All right. Okay. All right. And then what we'll do is uh, your attorney will have a chance to confer with the state, and then you'll receive your reset form. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. I've got a lady in custody, but I have a 10 o'clock over in CPS. Can I run over there and come back? Yes, you can. However, uh, if you're not back here by oh. 11, you're going to. Okay. All right, thank you. I already took care of that one. All right, thank you. Morning. I got 10 minutes, I'll, I'll make it. Oh, yeah. 
Adriana, do you have the white out over there? Thank you. Oh, we need to for Jason. Yeah, there's another one. If you need to. Jason. Okay, thank you. All right.
One floor is, let me see. All right, thanks. Thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Jason Montes. Hello. Hi. So what's happening with this case? All right, Judge. So uh, we have a recent burglary of a building case that's been indicted. This is our first setting. So I got here this morning and find out that the defendant was arrested on a robbery case on March okay. 20th. So he's remanded on the burglary case. On the robbery case, he's got a $40,000 bond. However, after uh, talking with him, I feel like I might have to ask for an evaluation. Okay. okay. Uh, we, plus, we don't have anything. What about the new yeah, well, he was at lifetime recoveries and, and there was a violation because he was at lifetime. He said he got bullied and left and when he was supposed to be at Haven, he left there. Uh, but uh, so he, he wants he wants you to let him go back. No, he didn't. The reason why you have a warrant on this case is because you didn't show up for court. Yeah, and you were a no show as of 10 a.m. So that's why. 10 a.m. when? March 13th. I understand that. Um, well, I didn't understand that. So I, I understand that I didn't understand, but I was going to see. So I'm, I'll am i have to come back next time for court to see what, what what's going to happen or can I? No, what's going to end up happening is you're going to remain in custody. If your client wants, I mean, if your attorney wants you to have a bond on this case, he'll need to file a motion and the court will hear it. But uh, he's going to file an evaluation. What's evaluation? Like? All right. It's a mental health evaluation. Have you ever been diagnosed with any mental health issues? Yes, so for any, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, bipolar and, and then not. I mean, I mean, right now things are getting tight and like because of the drugs. But I told myself I'm, I'm going to stay out of drugs and stuff. So. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to reset you. Okay. And then we're we're going to reset you for April uh, 30th. 30th. Your attorney is going to file a, a motion to have you evaluated right. and counsel. He may be a person that should potentially, if they have room, be in the mental health court. If it uh, it's true that he previously has a diagnosis, diagnosis of schizophrenia, uh, then that may be something that you all want to consider. Yeah, I'll check into that, Judge. All right. So this is going to be recalled for April 30th. And if your uh, attorney wants you brought over sooner, he can have you brought over sooner. And Norma, he's going to need to be referred to mental health court. Mm -hmm. Who is this? Uh, it's Jason Allen Montez. And counsel, you'll file the motion for evaluation? Yes. Okay. All right. 
Right, you so have any questions about anything? I was gonna ask for rehab, but I, I, I mean, if if I don't if I don't make it back, I'll probably have a different court. I mean, it'll be the, this court right next time. Yes, you'll be brought back to this court. But if there are any issues at the jail or something is happening, let your attorney know and he'll let me know and I'll have you brought over. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do you have any questions about anything else? Um, would I would I be able to get rehab maybe next time? Uh, we're not in at that far along in the process yet. Okay. So let's just see. The first thing I want is I want you to have an evaluation and we're going to see if you're uh, going to be accepted in the mental health court. Okay? okay. So those are our steps. Thank you. And in the meantime, don't get any more facial tattoos. Okay. I'm not. All right. Can I be excused? Here? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Who's here on David or Gary? That's me. Yes. Well, for first appearance, Mr. Aguirre. All right, Mr. Gary, come forward. All right. So, where are we on discovery? Hi, Judge. I've been provided discovery. The state has. There's some um, indications that there's some more information that from the, the state's discovery that I'm looking for. Okay. Um, but we've conferred. I do have an offer. All right. How old are you? I'm 41. I'll be 42 tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, happy birth month. Thank All you. right. Ms. Ferguson, set this in 30 days for a plea deadline date. Yes. I can do uh, April 29th. All right. You're going to come back on April 29th. Judge, I'll be out that week but I will be here the 25th for that sentencing. I we can do that on that Thursday. All right. We'll put you for April 25th. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you. And thank you for dressing appropriately for court. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Cabanas, you ready on Sergio Chavez? Come up. All right. And have you had a chance to speak with the Mac? Have they been down yet? No, not yet, Judge. I was just requesting a reset. Okay. Mr. Chavez's case. All right. And if you'll just make sure that he remains, because my understanding, Mac is supposed to be coming down with the immigration issue. Yes, Ron. Uh, how much time are you asking for? 30 days, Judge. All right. Ms. Ferguson on Sergio Chavez, if I can get a 30 day reset. April 29th. April 29th. Yes, is that good? All right. We'll come back on April 29th. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Uh, Juan Jose Flores. Is the attorney here for Juan Jose Flores? I can check his office. <laughs> All right, just have a seat, Mr. Flores. Yeah. Everybody knows. Gibson and Ryan. <laughs> 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 no bond on that. If you are, 
Uh, Jason and Vashon, can I see you all for a moment, please? Give me no all we can. <laughs> I've already notified my client on that other one. On the other side, so you know, I'm civil. I got one now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I went in. I went in to one sort of brief and just my uh, my son and his wife. I didn't know So that's where it drives back and on. So that's what driving in. So I went back and got the 22 and shot at her head. It's like, it's hard to kill. It's hard to kill. Okay, where are we you might have an advantage it was this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, who's on Escalante? And are you all ready? I'm just finishing up conferring with the state, Your Honor. All right, just approach when you're ready. All right. Adriana, on this one, they said they're going to take care of that today. the fourth I'm already Yeah, find it. Oh, no, I'm done with you. Give it to all ground. Hello, Judge. I got yes. somebody to cover while I was over there. Oh, okay. Yay. You were. Maria Elena Cisneros. Right. So now, Like the former mayor. Right, Maria? Like the former mayor, Henry Cisneros. Does the judge come on to? She'll call you up in just a second. Maria Cisneros. Hello, so where are we on discovery? Uh, we've got, I think, everything we need. The uh, talking with the state, I'll offer words in the mouth, but they need to talk with the complaining witness. Yes, Judge, that's that's right. We need to uh, uh, call the complaining witnesses on the All right, how much time do y'all need? Can we get a web page? Okay, Ms. Ferguson, if you recall this in 30 days. April 29th. April 29th. April 29th. All right, we're going to come back on April 29th. At that time, state you need to be prepared to tender an offer. Yes, ma'am. And how old are you? 48. All right, and there's going to be a quick turnaround for a plea deadline date. Okay. All right, is there anything else? No, ma'am. Oh, Excuse me, is your T-shirt torn or something underneath that? No. Oh, is that a new thing they do? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Are they not going to give you another T-shirt? Uh, I made a sports bra out of uh, the panties. Ah, very no. stylish, Judge. No, no, no. I, I understand because sometimes they don't give you certain items over there, so you have to make things. Yeah. All right. I'm glad you asked because I didn't want to. All right. <laughs> well, hey, if we don't ask, we don't know. All right. Thank you. We'll bring you back on April 29th. No.
Yes. Be good. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Yes. Okay. All right, no problem. When I need the order file Thanks. found on this when there was an order sent to me, if I could see that. Richard Campos. Do you need him up here, Jeff? Yes. You're welcome. Um, all right where are we on this case good morning judge this is our the first sending we've had it was a post indicted fugitive case i've conferred with the state we're making sure and tracking down some video that's been uploaded since um the case started and so, all right what video so this the video it's, it's up there now yeah. so it's just with uh 
uh, when Mr. Orhel, uh, Mr. Orhel's, the first time he's seen the video is, is, is today. They were on Verifik, but they are on Verifik, they're available. So he needs to subscribe to review those. Um, if we could get a reset. So all discovery has been tendered? I believe so, Judge. I think that's the other thing we might need to do, Judge, is if, uh, if he can have some time to look. I know there are several angles of, the, um, I don't know if they're ring cameras, but they're very similar to ring cameras if they're not that exact brand. Uh, and we do have uh, more than five videos uploaded, but less than 10. And so there may be other videos that are out there, but I, I don't believe there are, but that's one thing that we want some time to, to look into. All right. So were you able to give an offer today? No, ma'am, I need to um, uh, reach out to the complaint witness in space before I make an offer. All right, we're coming back on April 29th. And an offer needs to be tendered at that time. Yes. How old are you? 30. All right, there's gonna be a quick turnaround for a plea deadline date. Do you understand? I'm sorry. There is going to be a quick turnaround for a plea deadline date. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right, so we're gonna bring you back on April uh, 29th. Thanks for dressing appropriately for court. Yes, sir. All right, once you receive your reset form, you're excused. Thank you, Judge. Yes. Yes, I need the order. It hasn't been signed, but I want to make sure it's not signed. David Matchy, David Matchy. All right, thank you.
Court is calling 2023 CR 9329, State of Texas versus Macy Blair Malone. Now parties approach and announce for the record for the state. Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. I'm El Dapper for Macy Malone. Ready? And are you Miss Malone? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Yes, Your Honor. And did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Are there any applications on this case? No, Your Honor. Ms. Malone, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Malone, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review this with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you're charged with cruelty to non-livestock, torture, etc.? And that is a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Malone, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at four years in the prison, and there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? That is the plea agreement, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. State any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. I offer State's Exhibit 1 in the attachments. Any no objection? objection. Any objection? No objection. I'm going to show you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports? Yes, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same.
All right. After reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will find you guilty. Are right, you proceeding with sentencing? Sorry. Yes, Your Honor. If I could just say one thing on the record. Yes. Um, there were some mental health concerns, but we did have her referred to Carruthers. She was examined for competency and sanity, and both of those have been resolved. All right. So she was deemed to be competent? She, yes, she does have some severe mental health issues, but she is competent and she was sane at the time of the offense. All right. So why are you strangling a two month old cat? I'm sorry, Your Honor. No, I mean, I know you're sorry. You're saying you're sorry you did it. I'm asking why. Why would you do that? Um, I was under the influence of drugs. But you were eating at Sonic when this happened? Yes, ma'am. What drugs are you saying you were under the influence of? Uh, methamphetamine. Okay, so why did the meth make you strangle a cat? I'm not sure, ma'am. I also have mental health issues. And what's the mental health issues? Um, bipolar. All right, so again, we're back to the point. So I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were not on your medications? No, ma'am. All right, so you take meth. So how does that translate into strangling a cat? Your Honor, there's, there's no good explanation for strangling a cat. Um, well, no, I mean, here's the thing. Sometimes you're on drugs and you do certain things. So I'm just trying to figure out if meth caused her to strangle a cat or is there something else going on? According to the diagnosis from the psychologist, there was also some issues with bipolar disorder. She's When you mix being bipolar with meth and homelessness, it's all just a bad combination. Uh, I've asked her what her plans for the future will be. She's indicated she wants to work as a waitress. She eventually, once she's done with prison time, will live with her mother. She wants to avoid the bad people and the bad situations that she was involved with. Okay, so how does taking meth, being bipolar, equal to strangling the cat? As we said earlier, there's no excuse. There's but no, no I'm, I'm asking her. Sure. Like, what was your thought process? Because what I'm reading is there were two tabby cats running around. And so what go from two tabby cats running around, enjoying themselves to double knotting a rope around one tabby's net? I don't have an excuse. Your Honor. Well, I mean, I know you don't have an excuse, but I'm trying to figure out what was your thought process? I'm not sure what my thought process was at the time. Well, I mean, did you have a rope on you and go get a rope or how did that work out? I don't remember because I was on drugs. All right. Anything else? Okay. All right. I'm going to sentence you to four years in prison. You credit for any time served. There is to be no contact with any animals or children. Well, I should say, or minors. So you're not to have any contact with minors or children. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Or animals. Yes, Your Honor. So what that means is if you decide to give birth and have a child, Child Protective Services, if they're doing their job, they're supposed to come in and remove that child. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Anything else with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And just one moment. All right. Who is the man you were with at the at the drive in? Uh, Jonathan Smith. Jonathan Smith. Yes. All right. And there should be no contact with Jonathan Smith. All right. That's all. That's it, Jess. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay.
uh, Robert Solis. All right, who's your attorney? Ah, all right, just give us a moment, okay? Cabanas is talking to the immigration attorney again. Okay. Yeah. All right, Alejandro De Leon. Yes. Okay, is this on the docket today? Yes, Judge. Okay. Let me see what page your client is on. What page is Delion on? Alejandro? Ah, thank you. All right. So where are we on this case? Um, Judge, I'm like very near resolving this case. We issued some subpoenas mm -hmm. that have not come back. I'm pretty confident once we get the information from the subpoenas that we issued. Um, I'm not saying that they'll do it. I'm not making those promises, but they might even consider withdrawing it. All right, Ms. Ferguson, set this for April 22nd. All right, thank, thank you, you for dressing appropriately oh. for court. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, and then he's got an ignition interlock. I have two, one of them doesn't work. He's got two ignition interlocks. One is on a vehicle that's about to be repossessed. Um, it doesn't work. All right, well, once it's repossessed or doesn't work and somebody brings me information for that, then I'll take that matter up. Okay, too. All right, thank you. Who's here on Jesse Gonzalez? Uh, Jesse Gonzalez, if you'll come down, please. All right, and Mr. Gonzalez, did you have a chance to think things over and talk to whomever you wanted to talk to? Yes. Okay. All right, court is calling 2019 CR 9517 and 2020 CR 6198. State of Texas versus Jesse Jason Gonzalez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Thank you, Wilkins, for the state, Your Honor. Defense? We're ready, Your Honor. And your name? David Levinson. All right, and are you Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. All right, Mr. Gonzalez, I'm going to show you what's entitled Motion to Revoke Community Supervision and Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Yes. Are you the same Jesse Jason Gonzalez who was placed on community supervision in 2019 CR 9517 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group two, less than one gram on October 29, 2019 for a term of four years. Is that you? Yes. And are you the same Jesse Jason Gonzalez who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2020 CR 6198 for the offense of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon on July 8, 2020 for a term of five years. Is that you? Yes. State, are you proceeding on the same allegation in each motion? Uh, we are, Your Honor, although we were going to also in the 2020 CR 6198, uh, we're going to proceed on an additional uh, the, the allegation, violation alleged in the supplemental uh, motion today. All right. Well, I don't have the supplemental motion. Let me see. Judge, we don't, we can wait that one because I mean, if he's going to plead on the, the, okay. We don't necessarily need this. All right. Any objection to the state reading one allegation and the client, at, thank you, and the defendant answering uh, for both motions? Defense? No, no objection, Your Honor. All right, state. Violated condition number five. In Bear County, Texas, the defendant 
Jesse Jason Gonzalez did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of December 2022 and January 2023 in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. And your honor, we waive the other violations alleged in uh, both of the motions. Any objections? No objection, your honor. All right, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five and the cause number ending in 17, the court could find it true, grant the motion and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $1,500 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to please true to violation of condition number five? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number five true. And the cause number ending in 98, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court could find it true, grant the motion, sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number five true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. We're asking that you deny the motion, uh, continue the defendant in uh, on both clauses, uh, and then extend to uh, the follow the probation's recommendation, which is uh, to extend the probation to complete uh, the state ISF cognitive track, followed by IFP judge. All right. Why should I follow that? He has, he's been missing. You want to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Jesse Jason Gonzalez. Where have you been? Been in Uvalde, Texas. I've been changing my life. Like well, I mean, changing your life is not forgetting that you have a probation. So what have you been doing in Uvalde? Working. Uh, I just had a, I have a seven week old child. I haven't seen. All right. I don't understand why people decide to have children when they have cases hanging over their head. So you have a seven week child that you have not seen. Yes. And where is this child located? Uh, with the grandparents. And where is that? Uvalde, Uvalde, Texas. All right. So if they're with the grandparents, that means they're not with the mother. So the mother's here in, in the crowd. Oh, OK. She's in, she's so why is she here? To support. What is she planning on testifying? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, he wanted to also ask you if you would transfer the probation at some point to Uvalde because he wants to move there with his family to change life. and change his life. And he understands he needs to report and be clean. He'll only have, you know, maybe a year left on probation to complete. And once he finishes this cognitive program, he's hoping that he will be able to complete. Probation, what are you all recommending? I know people see him and they're like, he's so young. He weighs 90 pounds. Your Honor, on the recommendation from the probation um, CSO, it does indicate extend to complete state ISF cognitive track followed by ISP. And that is on both his cases. Um, So has he picked up any new offenses? So where have you been working? Um, MG building material in Uvalde, Texas. What do you do? Forklift. Uh, How long have you been doing that? About the past eight months already. Judge, if I, so I've been speaking to defense counsel, and he, he did need some time to think about it, Judge, but I explained to defense counsel, defense counsel told me that he explained to the defendant that this is sort of the end of the, the road here. He's got to do this ISF, he's got to comply, or we're going for the five years, Judge. So uh, he understands, and I know he should have understood already, but, um, you know, the options here are limited. It's either the state ISF and compliance or it's five years in prison. So I, I, I believe that he wants to try to work. All right. So here's my question for all parties involved. ISF in this case would be really a punishment, sort of, and to change his way of thinking, which it already should have been changed. But then is he going to lose his job in Uvalde if he's waiting for ISF? 
He's already been incarcerated, <clears throat> waiting for this hearing. But no, my question is, they're still is he going to lose oh, his job? Yeah, they're still holding my job. But I was supposed to be over there sometime when I get out, but they don't. I told them like two weeks and they said well, that was weeks. the wrong thing to tell them. <laughs> so whatever. And then uh, on behalf of my girlfriend, Megan Lopez, she she's the one that has contact with them, too. So. It's, he has support and family. His father's here. He's got a lot of brothers, cousins. He has a lot of family support. And me, I've known him his whole life. I, I've read him the riot act. And hopefully this is like the prosecutor said, his last chance. He knows once he gets out, he's got a report. He's yeah. got a test. And, you know, I mean, he should have known, known that before. How old are you? I'm 23 years old. He's really close to finishing, and we're asking the court to give him this one last chance, and we'll see what happens. And if I'm here again in a year, well, we'll know. If not, we'll be in good shape. And the reason why I moved to Uvalde, Texas, to change my environment and for the people, places, and things that I couldn't. I wasn't. The reason why I, uh, I moved to Uvalde was to change my people, places, and things in my environment. Well, I mean, that doesn't help. So, for example, changing people, places, and things, that's what they say when they're in NA and AA. But guess what? NA and AA, AA also tells you that you are supposed to take care of your responsibilities. And you didn't take care of this responsibility because did you turn yourself in? No. Somebody had to go find you and pick you up. He was stopped or he was driving. And it was this traffic stop. Mm -hmm. And then you're not obeying the rules of the road. People get a little bit lax when they've been driving for a while. I don't know if there was a conviction on the stop or not. <clears throat> All right, this is what I'm going to do. End cause number 2019-CR-9517. I'm going to deny the motion and terminate you unsatisfactorily. And then in 2020 CR 6198, is he able to be placed on GPS if he's in Uvalde? I'm going to deny the motion, alternate amend conditions. And it's going to include parenting classes. GPS partial. For 180 days. And it's partial for employment only. What that means is all you can do is go to work and go back home. And the way GPS works, if there is a barbecue, uh, you're not even allowed to go into the backyard to get the plate. Yes, ma'am. Or reach out the window. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Are we going to allow transfer to you, Bounty? Yes. Yes, Judge. All right. And then there'll be a transfer to Uvalde. And this is where your punishment comes in. Your probation is going to be extended for three years. <laughs> Anything else? Mm, no, Your Honor. Thank you very much for understanding and trying to 
give me that second chance to show. All right. You better do better. All right. Thank you. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, just all parenting classes and pretty much it. Okay. All right. Good luck to you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Judge. I really appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Robert Solis. Oh, just one second. Uh, Alfonso Cabanas. Oh, hi. Hello, Mr. Solis. How are you doing? I'm doing okay this morning. All right. Well, thank you for dressing appropriately for court. Yes, ma'am. What we're going to do is uh, I have an attorney uh, to represent you, Mr. Cabanas. Yes, ma'am. And so that he can uh, address concerns that you may have. Thank you. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll reset this yes, just to get an update on how you're doing and if your concerns have been alleviated. Yes, ma'am. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? Your Honor, um, after speaking with the supervising officer, she did say that he's doing rather well. Um, he's recently obtained employment. He um, The only concerns that she's had was his your analysis, I got, um, I got, his your analysis, and him submitting his payments. Um, there has been a lack in that, but we know that he didn't have a job at the time. So, um, after speaking with him, he says that you know he did go take his UA yesterday. He's gonna stay on his monthly UAs. He's gonna start making regular payments and um, continue reporting. As, as necessary. Um, back in November, there was a supplemental report sent to the court in regards to his device, his mm -hmm. ignition interlock. And um, at that time, judge, the request was denied for removal. I do believe at this point, um, counsel um, is going to ask possibly if that could be something to consider removing all right so this is what i'm going to do mr uh solis yes, if there are no violations yes, i'm going to reset this and i'll reset it in 30 days if there are no violations we'll remove it i'll order that it be removed thank you okay? so much so you know if there are violations not a problem okay no problem all right thank is you. there anything else you need um i just wanted to let you know that that I got in trouble when I was his age. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to say that um, I worked very hard to try and keep my promises. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm trying very hard to do well mm -hmm. and to uh, to live by my promises. So cool. Oh, I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, in this court, I always tell people communication is key. So if there's an issue, you just let your attorney know. And you always can come back here, okay? Thank you. All right. So let me give you a 30 day reset. Yes, Ms. Ferguson. Thank you. You're All right. You're welcome. Okay. So we'll be back on April 29th. Hello. Oh, mom is going to be so happy to see you, David. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how have you been doing? My mom always asks, how's David doing? I'm like, oh. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one. Uh, Alfredo Lugo. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. I want you to know that you made me famous for about 
20 minutes or so. Apparently, I came out on TikTok doing a plea. Okay. okay. My, my niece and nephews and my sons and <laughs> we're all calling me. And I said, Dad, you're famous. You're famous. Oh. You're on TikTok. Well, and you know what's so funny? Somebody asked me one time, they they said, are you in, on LinkedIn? I said, I think I was on LinkedIn from 1997 or something. Yeah. So I do not know much about the technology. I'm trying to work on being more tech savvy. It's, it's All right. Court is calling 2024 CR0937 State of Texas versus Alfredo Lugo. Uh, just for a moment off the record. Councils, if y'all could not talk behind the court reporter, because we're on the record. If you want, the deputy can move you down to the other end. All right, back on the record. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Yes. Ed Garza for Mr. Lugo. And are you Mr. Lugo? Mm -hmm. Council, have you received all the discovery and did you review that with your client? We did, yeah. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Lugo, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Mm -hmm. Going to show you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Mm -hmm. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? All right, Mr. Lugo, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, less than one gram? <clears throat> That's a state jail felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, and did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could, off the record for a moment, excuse me, the lady in the black top with the red or burgundy spots on it, are you uh, on the docket today? Or are you here for someone else? I'm sorry. All right. So you need to move because you're flirting with the inmate. That's not allowed. So you need to step outside. Deputy, remove her. And who are you here for? All right. Guy with the gold glasses. And lady, you're flirting with somebody who's an inmate. That means that He's not doing anything for you. And you're down here where you should be, probably be at work. And if you have children, you should be con concentrating on your children. You're not allowed back in the courtroom. You're excused. You know you should not be flirting with people in the crowd. This is not a dating show. And while we're off the record, Mr. Gonzalez, I noticed the mark on your arm. You need to make sure you have a doctor look at that, okay? Don't wait till the last minute. But just, I get it. It, that was his wife. But I, you know, no, that's I no flirting. I understand. Yeah. I'm just my, my yeah. Right. Still not able to flirt. Yeah. No flirting in the courtroom. Flirting in the courtroom. Yeah. All right. We're back on the record. Again, did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He does, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? He does, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Mr. Lugo, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? Mm. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, there's a $1,500 fine. State recommends deferred adjudication, and there's to be restitution for drug testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, defense? Yes, ma'am. State? Yes, 
showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Outside the agreement, the state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of two years. There be a TAP evaluation and 120 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand that was a recommendation from the state and the court does not have to follow that recommendation? Okay. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Thank you. State any evidence? No objection. All right, state, you may continue to confer. Mr. Lugo, I'm showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Mm -hmm. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Mm -hmm. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Mm -hmm. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? We are, Your Honor, please. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? We just ask the court to follow the recommendation, Judge. All right, Mr. Lugo, who is Blaine Younger? The person that is working for me. All right, and who is Elvira Lugo? My wife. All right. Do you have any children? No. How old are you? 58. All right. Does she have any children? They're all grown up. They're not with us. All right. Grandchildren? They're, yes, grandchildren. And how old are the grandchildren? They range from uh, 21 from twenty-one to 10. I think. Yeah. All right. I'm doing the math in my head. And that something's not working out. How old is she? She's uh, 62. Oh, now the math is working out. Okay. Before it wasn't working out. All right. So are you currently employed? Yeah, I'm self-contract. Self All right. So if you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? Keep it clean. All right. So what are you doing with math? Uh, the, the wrong person. It was not even my man. Anything. Yes. Yeah, he was found in the vehicle, but... Blame was the, the one that, that was carrying it. Well, you know, the law has this thing called care, custody, and control. Yes, and yes. whether or not it's within your reach. So you're driving and it's in the yes. center console. That's what the officer said. All right. This is what the court is going to do. Court is going to sentence you to a $1,500 fine. That will be probated. Two years deferred adjudication. 120 hours community service restitution. Proof of employment within 30 days, no employment as a home health care provider or with minors, no unsupervised contact with minors, regular reporting by Zoom or in person, regular random UAs, and I'm going to want field visits one time per month, for three months and then at probation's discretion. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? Uh, yes. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Okay. Gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, 
And because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. To be successful on probation in this court, communication is key. If there's an issue with your probation officer or if you need something, let them know. If you feel like they're not addressing it, you can always come back to court. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you for dressing appropriately for court. Yes. And tell your children and grandchildren I said hello. I All right, uh, just have a seat. Probation is going to go over conditions with you. May I be excused now? Yes. Thank you. Rogelio Laura. And then after Laura, it will be Escalante. Then after Escalante, it will be Flores. And then after Flores, it will be Johnny Webb. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. All right, so we need a trial date. Uh, actually, Your Honor, um, we entered into the pretrial diversion uh, and, and submitted the agreement yesterday. Okay. Uh, so it's with them. I just asked for some time for uh, the court to verify that. But I think once he does his pretrial um, check in, his initial check in, the case should be disposed. All right, so Mr. Laura, uh, the state did inform me that you had signed up for PTD, but I still make clients appear. Uh, even though that's the case. So you can't be late for court. You understand? Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Ferguson? Yes, sir. I need a 30-day reset for PTD. April 30th. All right. We're going to come back on April 30th. And thank you for dressing appropriately well, for you. court. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank, thank you. you. Jose Escalante? Sorry. Huh? Okay. Well, they checked your office. They said you were not in the office. Oh, well, I'm here now, Judge. Okay. We'll we'll take you up. Okay, Judge. Yep. Ready to be taken up? All right. Not up beyond me yet. <laughs> Who's the attorney on Escalante? He went outside to get his client. To get him. To get his client. Okay. He <laughs> did. Oh, see, he's here now. Sorry, guys. No problem. Court is calling 2024 CR 1359, State of Texas versus Jose Escalante. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Defense. Jason for defense. And are you Mr. Escalante? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? I have, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Escalante, I'm showing you what's entitled Application for Deferred Adjudication or Community Supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Uh, Your Honor. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Escalante, I'm showing you what's entitled um, Court Admonishments and Defendant's Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand and count to your charge with possession of a controlled substance penalty group one four to 200 grams? That's a second degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to 20 years in prison? Yes, Your Honor. And up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. 
Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I do, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? I do, Your Honor. Mr. Escalante, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page, did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, state is proceeding on count two. Punishment is to be assessed at six years in the prison. The state opposes your applications. They're taken in consideration 2024 CR 2993 and 2024 CR 0145. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? It is your pardon. State? Yes, sir. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to count to an indictment, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. State any evidence? State all proceedings. I've reviewed those with my client, Your Honor. We have no objections. All right, you may continue to confer. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there'll be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments and review the same. All right. After reviewing state's exhibits, one in attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Uh, Ms. Ferguson, I need a PSI date. I'm sorry, when? May 21st. All right. Is your client going to need a tap? A tap would be helpful, Judge. All right. PSI and tap evaluation. And we'll be back on May 23rd for sentencing. And you'll need to be here at 9 a.m. All right. So um, I'll base my decision on whether or not to grant your application based upon any evidence that's presented to me in the uh, PSI and TAP evaluation. All right, just remain in court to speak with probation. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Honor. You're welcome. All right, is the interpreter here? No, she's not here yet, Judge. Okay. Still waiting. All right, one Florence. Court is calling 2024 CR 0663 State of Texas versus Juan Jose Flores. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Defense. We know he's passed for the defendant. And are you Mr. Flores? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, sir. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Are there any applications in this case? It'd be good. Oh. Mr. Flores, I'm showing you what's entitled uh, application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. 
Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Mr. Flores, I'm showing you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of continuance violence against family? That's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to a jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Flores, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find uh, that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. State recommends community supervision. They're taking in consideration 2024 CR 0664. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Kimberly, Destiny, Ortiz. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to be designated as primary custodial parent? Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Defense, is that the plea? Yes, ma'am. State, is that the plea? Yes, Did you review the uh, waiver of appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? Oh, yeah. Outside the agreement, the state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of five years. Did you understand that is a recommendation from the state and the court does not have to follow the, those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not no contest. guilty, or no contest? No contest. State, uh, any evidence to support the plea? Your Honor, State offers State's Exhibit 1 and all attachments. No objections. Showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations of the record. Uh, you may continue to confer oh, and then pass those documents to defense. We're back on the record. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports? But most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, sir. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Please ask the court to follow a plea agreement. All right, and I'm sorry, state, uh, were you in contact with the complainant on this? Yes, your honor, we did contact her. She is aware of you. All right. So, Mr. Flores, why are you putting your hands on someone in anger? Um, I was in a relationship for her for like for almost 20 years. And, um, that doesn't excuse it. Oh, uh, uh, I was out of, I was really out of, out of character. 
at the, at the moment? Well, I mean, you were out of character for days because there's just more than one day. Here's the thing. If you think somebody is cheating on you, you have one or two options. One, you tolerate it. Two, you, you forgive them. Or three, you leave. Those are your options. Your options are not, oh, I, I see a coworker calling you and I think you're cheating. So therefore I'm going to hit you. That's not the way relationships work. How old are you? Um, I'm going to be 40 next week. No excuses. You're 40. You have the area cold on your throat for some reason. You know, San Antonio has a second area code as well. I think it's 830. Yeah. They have so where are you going to put that? I'm going to have to get a cover up. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you going to cover up the 210 with 830? Or are you going to oh. do sort of like a fade in and fade out? Oh, something different. You have a 210 on your throat and you're wearing a Bulls, Chicago Bulls sweatshirt. I took the bus this morning. It was cold. So this is the only thing I oh, had. Okay. I thought you would have pulled on a Spurs jersey or something. They won last night. Uh, all right. Are you employed? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm going to be uh, working with my brother. Doing what? Uh, picking up the trash and the freeways and all that. Oh, okay. Well, the freeways do need cleaning up. Yes. But don't touch the Easter grass. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is people from the... from. Who are not from the South, they don't understand about the Easter grass. <laughs> All right. Well, it goes. Do you have any children? Yes, I do. How many? Seven. What are their ages? Uh, from 16 to, to four. All right. So you're just skipping the ages. Do you know their birth dates? I have so many of them. I, I can't remember. See, you know, maybe people should stop having children when you can't remember their birthdays. So you are going to get them birthday presents, right? Yes, I always do. So do you have boys or girls? Uh, four boys and three girls. All right. How old are the girls in age range? 16, 15, to 14. All right. And then an eight-year-old boy, seven, six, and four. Let me just tell you what ends up happening with family violence cases. Children learn about relationships based upon what they see. That's how children learn to talk. If you see a child who's young and they're using profanity, it means profanity is in their household. So I want you to think about this for a moment. The fact that you hit her you have girls right so what if they're they're in some kind of relationship and the person they're with think they're cheating maybe they are maybe they not and he decides he wants to put their ha his hands on them in anger how would you feel about that Very yeah mm -hmm. so you need to start thinking about what you're teaching your children and what kind of relationship you want your girls to have you understand yes ma'am all right this is what the court is going to do Court is going to sentence you to five years in prison, suspended and probated for five years. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Kimberly, Destiny Ortiz. That relationship is over. You are not to call her. You're not to write her. You're not to send her flowers saying, I'm sorry. Please remember the old times. You I'm, understand? I'm, I'm done. Through, yeah, I'm through with that. All right. Proof of employment. Within 30 days, there's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. The BIPP course. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Regular random UAs. 300 hours of community service restitution. I'm going to require parenting classes. Once he completes the parenting classes, the community service hours will be deemed uh, satisfied. Gang evaluation. Field visits. One time per month for three months. Uh, are you a gang member? No, ma'am. So you just putting 210 on your neck for no reason whatsoever. Like 15 years ago, yes. You were 15? So 15, 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 oh, 15 years ago. Years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to do the MRT for him because he needs to start making better decisions. I mean, I don't understand just getting a 210. Wasn't thinking. That was 15 years ago. Yes. Okay. Uh, MRT. Uh, let's see. 
Is there anything else, probation? All right. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, ma'am. All right. Did you review the document entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal because this is a felony conviction and an affirmative finding of family violence. You're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. We can go off the record. In this court, communication is key. In order to be successful on probation, you need to make sure that you're in touch with your probation officer. If you feel as though they're not addressing some issue you have, you can always come back to the court. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, and keep your hands to yourself. I know that y'all will, ma'am, for now on. All right. Believe me. And are you currently in a relationship? No, no, I'm, I'm not looking for no relationship. Right All right, now. before you even think about getting a re relationship, Kadiz, what should you do? Uh, Get an orchid. <laughs> All right. They are, they, they are selling them now all at Walmart, H-E-B, everywhere. Get one. And when you get it, the flowers are in bloom. It looks all pretty. You bring it back. And once those flowers fall off, if you can get it to rebloom again, you too may be ready for a relationship. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that, orchids take patience. Like you get that little tag where they tell you what to do and they say put two ice cubes in it. When you do your research, you're not supposed to put ice cubes in it. Then they like indirect sunlight, but then you may get one that says, who told you I liked indirect sunlight and it doesn't bloom again. So if you do that, you will have learned patience. Yes, All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, Adriana. Ah, oh, here it is. Priscilla Batias. Priscilla Batias. We're here, John. Okay. Thank you. Come down. All right. What is happening with this case? Well, this is our initial appearance. Um, I have conferred with Daniel this morning. Uh, I believe he's going to try to reach out to the complaining witnesses okay. and convey an offer prior to our next setting. Um, and that is about as far as we got today, Judge. It was, all right. It was do very you have, recently invited. All right. Do you have all the discovery? I believe I do. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Ms. Ferguson, I need a 30 day reset on Batis, please. All right. We're going to come back on April 30th. If your attorney wants you brought back sooner, then he can request it and we'll bring you back sooner. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank hey, congratulations on the third place. Thank you. That is so awesome. It is. I'm it proud. Is. And it's she, not even my child. She, she, she doesn't understand it yet. She was very disappointed. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was it was really really good. We're glad it worked. It was a long, just getting there was hard. Oh yeah, thunderstorms and it's a four hour drive. And well, you know what I tell people? Really See, in gymnastics, they don't do participation medals. It's either no. first, second, third. That's it. I, you know, she scored a perfect ten. I know. Events. Okay, and let me just tell you the the apparatus that she scored a perfect ten on. That's right up there for me with the balance beam, the uneven bars. That takes a lot. I'll send you the video and you can practice the routine. I'd like, no, to, I'd like I, to see that. I cannot do that. But you know that the hard part about the uneven bars is they're uneven and you have to jump from the bottom to the top and then make it back up to the top. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Tell her I said congratulations. I will. All right. By the way, the wife gets orchids to bloom for years well, and years. Let me just tell you right now, we I mean, have two her. orchids in the ICU uh, <laughs> that somebody brought to us. <laughs> But we have about she resuscitated. No, we have 10 orchids in the back. They're beautiful. Yeah, we should her office is the same way. Yes. All right. Have a good one. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. All right, the interpreter for Edgar Aguilar. Oh, okay. How are you? Hi. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.
And Norma, is Jaime Adapi still here? I'm here, Your Honor. Oh, okay. We have the Mac immigration attorney, we've got the interpreter, and we've got the defendant, so we're... Okay. All right, so on Edgar Aguilar. Yeah. Hi. Hi, it's always good <laughs> seeing you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, All right, so on Edgar Aguilar, what is happening? We don't have an agreement, Your Honor. He's still asking for a jury trial. All right. So, Ms. Ferguson, I need a jury trial date on this case. And before you all leave, if you'll do a, an acknowledgement of discovery. We've already done one. It was close to the trial before. Okay. I don't have it. Okay. I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay. okay. All right. Your jury trial date is going to be May 14th. You'll be brought over dressed uh, for trial in whatever civilian clothing you have at the jail. If you wish to be attired in something differently, you need to speak to your attorney. And counsel, if there's an issue with the clothing exchange, just let the court know. I believe this is the clothes that was brought to him by his family. All right. That's how he was arrested. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, who is here on Pete Castillo? Here you go. Your Honor. All right, if you all come down. Court is calling 2022 CR. One one seven nine six State of Texas versus Pete Castillo. Could our parties announce for the record for the state? Defense. Are you Pete Castillo? Yes, Your Honor. Gonna show you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision and second amended motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Are you the same Pete Castillo who was placed on community supervision in 2022 CR 11796 for the offense of burglary of a building with intent to commit theft on February 3rd, 2023 for a term of two years? Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. State? How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Any objections? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $2,000 fine? I do, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? I do, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. Both individual offers uh, uh, probation to sentence him to a reform sentence of 15 months and the state jail facility. And the state, state is in, uh, taking into consideration cause number CN 114880, which is a forgery that he pledged to. All right. Are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, yes Your Honor. Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes, Your Honor. Court then will grant the motion. Sentence you to 15 months in the state jail facility. Give you credit for any time served. There's a $2,000 fine. Time and money will not run concurrent. There's to be no contact with advance. Auto Parts and the Tuscany Park Appointments.
going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? I did, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? I do, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record. Stop stealing. Stop taking what doesn't belong to you. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in and out of somebody's prison and in and out of somebody's jail. A worst case scenario, somebody stumbles upon you while you're breaking and trying to steal things that they've worked hard for. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are we ready with the interpreter? All right. Who are the parties here on Johnny, Joe Webb? All right, and who are you all with? We're the Israel Dabba, Your Honor. Oh, okay, awesome. The Mac Immigration, Mac. we're all ready. <laughs> all right. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Uh, while they're doing that, I'm going to take up Johnny Joe Webb. And if you all will move down to the other end so that the court reporter can hear. All right. And who is on Johnny Joe Webb? Come Johnny, forward. There, Come forward. Little people are in my way. <laughs> okay. And is he pleading on both of these cases? Uh, we've already pled, Your Honor. This is the sentencing. Ah, okay. Thank you. You need a PSI? No, I have the PSI. Okay. Yes. All right. Court is calling 2023 CR 9819 and 2023 CR 0549. State of Texas versus Johnny Joe Webb. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Thank you for the state. Matt Solhansky for Mr. Webb. All right, Mr. Webb, you entered a plea uh, in the cause number ending in 19 to count one of guilty, and you entered a plea in the cause number uh, ending in 4-9 of guilty, and each cause number the court found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court found you guilty. In the cause number ending in 49, the state is silent on your application. Uh, they're asking that your punishment be assessed at six years. And in cause number, and in one nine, the state is all in, silent on your application. And they're asking that your punishment be at six years. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any objections to the PSI report? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, any witnesses, defense? No, ma'am. All right. Then the court will hear argument. Um, your Honor, if you look at the PSI, you can see he has quite an extensive criminal history. Uh, but he's never gotten any drug treatment, and he's been using since he was since he was a preteen. He was been using alcohol, drugs, things like that. Uh, he's been in the what's it the precision precision recovery precision recovery for quite a while. Uh, the uh, PSI uh, suggested that if he gets probation, that DDF would be a, a good place to put him. He's got some uh, mental issues as well. We're asking that uh, you give him probation. And, and like we've seen him to jail several times, that hadn't helped. We need drug help. All right. Oh, and he apologized for not being here yesterday. Okay. He's here today as promised. All right. One moment. All right, Mr. Webb. Yes, ma'am. I am reviewing the PSI report, and there's a lot of criminal history here, mm -hmm. but you have a theft. possession cases and then this case is fraudulent possession of identifying information 50 or more yes, 
And then as a part of this plea bargain agreement, the state took several cause numbers into consideration. Sure. Uh, I just don't think you're a good candidate for probation. Um, I will ask for the therapeutic community for you, but I'm not going to grant you probation. And cause number uh, 2023 CR 9819. The court has previously stated is finding you guilty. The court will sentence you to five years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. There's a $1,500 fine, time and money will run concurrent. Take in consideration NITMAG number 734693, uh, 2023 CR 9820. 2023 CR0220. And with regards to restitution, uh, probation, were there any uh, complainants that reached out with the restitution amount? I'm looking, I don't see any, it says to be determined. For each complainant, I have to be determined. Yes, I don't see that. I only have one return letter and I don't have anything else. All right, so just one moment. There'll be restitution, if any, to the following. Mark, M-A-R-Q-U-E, Trevino. Michael. Barbano, B A R B E N E A U X. Michael Ford. Kaylin, K A L I N Benjamin. Juan Moronis, M O R O N E S. Jorge Jimenez. Jason Garcia. Arturo Gonzalez Jr. James Jemison, J E M I S O N. Ariel A E R I E L L E Johnson, Michael Turner, Miguel Flores, Maria Martinez. Robert Goodboo, G O O D B U E, April Lopez, Montegudo, M O N T E A G U D O, Aguila, A G U I L A. Lana Talley, T-A-L-L-E-Y. Jessica D'Souza, D-E-S-O-U-Z-A. 
Desiree Morgan. Juan Hernandez Jr. Luciano Mendex. That's M E N D E X. Anthony Jackson. <laughs> Natalie Fuentes. Derman, D E R M O N Smith. Noreen Lambert, N O R E E N L A M B E R T. Peter Bean, B E A N. Edna Lozano. Trey King, Julio Bacanegra, B O C A N E G R A, and this is to run concurrent with. 2023 CR0549, showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, You'll need to speak to an attorney, and I'll recommend the therapeutic community. And cause number 2023-CR-0549. Court is finding you guilty. The court will sentence you to five years in the prison. You be credit for any time served. This will run concurrent with 2023-CR-0549. I'm sorry, 2023-CR-0549. 9819. There's a $1,500 fine. Time and money will run concurrent. Taking consideration, night mag number 734693, 2023 CR 9820, 2023 CR 0220. And there's to be restitution to SAPD for drug testing. And the court will request the therapeutic community. Going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. Your Honor. Yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Webb had requested that he be allowed to turn himself in uh, at a later date. All right. Uh, take care of my grandma. He's a TIC on the mission. Okay. All right. That'll be denied. Sure. Can you speak? Yes. I, I take care of my 87-year-old grandma. And she, I, we were thinking that I was going to get probation because of or DDRF, and so I haven't been able to find anybody to take care of her, so or help me take care of her. So I just need, I mean, like a week to, to get it situated. And I turn myself in. I don't have a problem doing that. All right, I'm sorry, that'll be denied. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, are the parties here on Ricardo Quares Ramirez? We're ready, Your Honor. Ricardo Quares Ramirez. Court is calling. Court is calling 2024 CR 0685 State of Texas versus Ricardo 
Perez Ramirez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Defense. I'm El Dapefer Ricardo Quiroz Ramirez. And are you Mr. Ramirez? Sí. Yes. All right, we have an interpreter here. If you could raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear and affirm you will faithfully translate from English into Spanish and Spanish into English, so help you God? I do, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Carmen Tarragona Saez. And counsel, uh, are you fluent in Spanish? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And have you been able to communicate with your client in the Spanish language? Yes, Your Honor. And all of the documents, Mr. Ramirez, I'm going to review with you, are in English. Were those explained to you in Spanish? Yes. Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Ramirez, did you review the document entitled Application for Deferred Adjudication or Community Supervision? With your attorney, did you understand it? Yes. And did you sign it? Yes. Did you review the document entitled True Bill of Indictment with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Yes. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, right. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, sir. Mr. Ramirez, did you review the document entitled Court Admonishments and Defendant's Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. You're charged with driving while intoxicated, third or more. That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be uh, used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Ramirez, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No. No. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? No. No. Uh, counsel, has he been appointed an immigration attorney? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and who was appointed? The immigration attorney from the MAC office, and actually, Your Honor, he's present as well. All right, and Mr. Ramirez, were you able to speak with an immigration attorney? Yes. And were you able to speak with them concerning the impact a plea in this case would have on your immigration status? Yes. Were, were you advised that of the consequences of entering a plea of no contest or guilty in this case and the impact it will have on your immigration status? Yes. Did the advice you receive include possible deportation, denial of re-entry into the United States, and the denial of naturalization? Yes. All right. Do you understand the immigration consequences of entering a plea in this case? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, 
According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at four years in the prison. There's a thousand dollar fine. State opposes, I'm sorry, state recommends community supervision. There's to be the DWI intervention course, VIP, ignition interlock for half the term, and two-year driver's license suspension. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes. Defense? That is the plea, right? State? Did you review the waiver of appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes. Counsel, are there any such motions? No, Your Honor. Outside the plea bargain agreement, state is requesting that the community supervision be for a term of four years. There be a TAP evaluation, 120 hours of community service restitution, 30 days house arrest in lieu of 10 days in the Bear County Jail. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? No objection. Did you review the document entitled trial court, I'm sorry, waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial? A right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses statements and police reports, but most importantly, there'll be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. The court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments. The court has reviewed the same. The court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, he just wanted me to convey to the court that he does accept responsibility. He is an alcoholic. And he actually has a strong support system in the front row. He's got his three sisters right there on the left. And they just are here for him. They love him. They support him. And he's just uh, wants the court know that he's ready to uh, comply. All right. This is what the court is going to do. The court is going to sentence you to four years in the prison, suspended and probated for four years. $1,000 fine, that will be probated. DWI intervention course, victim impact panel live, ignition interlock for half the term, two-year driver's license suspension. There is to be a referral to felony drug court in custody. There's 10 days in the Bear County Jail as a condition of probation. <laughs> Upon release, there's to be 90 sober meetings in 90 days. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person, there's to be regular random UAs. If not accepted into in a felony drug court, uh, then there's to be a TAP evaluation in custody, follow all TAP recommendations. If not accepted in felony drug drug court. There's to be 200 hours of community service restitution. And there's to be field visits one time per month 
for three months, then at probation's discretion. A uh, probation, is there anything else? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right, just have a seat. And then we're going to do this one case, then we're taking our lunch break. Marco Marino Vasquez. Thank you, Judge. Yes. yes. Okay. Judge, if I may, just brief housekeeping matter on the previous case. The immigration consequence advice was actually provided by defense counsel based on the assessment that I provided to him after speaking with him and with the defendant. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Who's here for Marco Antonio Marino Vasquez? Thank you. All right, so where are we on this case? Okay. All right, and has he spoken to an immigration attorney? Uh, we have not. I'll set that up, Judge, but based on the charges, it's murder. Oh. And, I mean, it, it doesn't change. It would be automatic deportation after he's if he's found guilty and sentenced he would have to do well has the murder case been indicted yeah. all right so i don't have that file if for some reason the computer system shows tampering this is sorry oh is the indictment they put it in a different count right which okay. has thrown my client for a loop because he's like y'all keep talking about murder but the computer system doesn't show it and i've explained to him that Unfortunately, there is an indictment for murder, and that's what we're facing. All right, because that's why I'm always like, but it's tampering. It's the DA's fault. All right, and then uh, to the clerk. I'm going to need a copy of the indictment. It's not in this file anywhere. Okay. So an offer has been tendered. We're going to recall this in 30 days. In 30 days, we'll recall it for you all to one, get a jury trial date and make a decision to see if you all have all of the discovery. Uh, I need it. April 30. All right. We're going to come back on April 30th. That's going to be your plea deadline date. If you choose not to accept a plea in this case, then we will give you your jury trial date. Actually, Judge, third, the 25th of April through the 5th of May, I'm out of Okay. Out of town. All right. So let me see. We do the 8th of uh, May. Well, wait a minute. When are you out of town? The 25th through the 5th. All right. We can put it on the 15th. Of April or May? Uh, April. It's tax day. All right. You are 18th. That's fine, Judge. All right, Norman. So put this on April 18th. And that will be your plea deadline date. Oh, just one second. May I speak to Your Honor? Yes. I wanted to ask Your Honor if you could give me another attorney because I don't feel he's helping me. All right, so just speak with him. No, I have spoken with him. to him many times. All right, so let me explain something to you. All right, this is from my experience as a defense attorney and as a prosecutor. Sometimes an attorney will tell people what the offer is, right? And people don't like the offer. So they think if they get another attorney, they can get a better offer. But the offers in this court are what the offers are. Wait, let me stop you. Defense counsel has had some uh, personal matters that he needs to be take that he needed to take care of. Guess what? In this world, everybody at some point in time 
has personal matters they need to handle. Maybe you have a relative who is ill, or maybe you have parents who are ill. As we get older, that tends to happen. Or maybe somebody needs a vacation, right? Sometimes that happens. So attorneys are not robots. They can't keep going and going and going and going. At some point, they need a break. And everybody who's here has a life that's going on, right? And guess what? Your case is probably not the only case he has. But I guarantee you one thing, at least the way I would do it in my practice, I would tell my clients, look, you are not the only client I have right now. You're in the freezer. You're not even ready to be, be thawed out yet. You're in the freezer. I have other clients who are on the stove and they're about to boil over. So I need to take care of that. But I don't allow people just to get another attorney because eh, I don't like this. Their bedside manner is not great. I always tell people with me, your bedside manner does not need to be great. I just need to see you're working hard for me. Okay. So we're going to come back on April 18th and we're going to see where we are. And what I can tell you is, I know you thought you were here for tampering. Sometimes in the DA system, Whoever is indicting the case, he didn't indict it. Sometimes count one, people may put tampering, and count two and three is something completely different. When they have count one as a tampering, you know what's going to be written on the file? Tampering. The murder is going to be lost in the indictment. So now you know. You're charged with murder as well. So we'll be back on April 18th. Thank you. Judge, there's a co-defendant on that case that talks to Mr. Rand later. Oh, who is it? Avis. All right, Mr. Rebus, come on down. Could I see the file on Avis Rebus, please? No, of course, of course. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? Good. Okay. Good. All right. So state you've made an offer. Yes, you are. All right. So we're going to come back on April 18th. 18th. Yes. I will appear for Monica. Monica does have a vacation letter. Uh, however, Monica will do a jail visit with Mr. Rivas, but I'll likely be the, the attorney appearing on the 18th. All right. So we'll be back on April 18th. That will be your plea deadline date. You'll need to let me know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? Okay. All right. Thank you, Judge. Okay, thank you. Dina, you can go on your break. Your Honor, may I be excused? Yes, you may. It's always great it's seeing you. Pleasure. All right, I love have coming a good here. All right, thank you. Hmm? Oh, let me see. I know. It's been a while. No, I have. I have. You don't have a good bottle. Do you? Okay. Oh, we did. Oh, Diana. Can you give me the uh, pot stickers? Okay, thank you. All right, so everyone, these are the, we're going to be back at 1.30-ish. Uh,